Hello guys, this is Revolution. In this video, in this live stream, we're going to be talking about how to fix modern Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Super. Obviously, Dragon Ball is a lot of fun, Dragon Ball Super is, but ultimately, it has a lot of flaws. So, I'm going to welcome my good friend, Wild King Kanji, to this video to discuss this and hopefully offer some resolutions or potential options to actually fix Dragon Ball Super. So, say hello, Wild King Kanji. Hello, World King Kanji. Yes, <laughs> no, I'm. I've been looking forward to uh, to discussing all of this with you, man. Because, like, you know, generally, I remember when we were on the way to Slaycon before, and you and I were literally just talking nonstop about ways that we could think to actually try and fix what was going on in Super, and uh, you know, general different sort of takes that we had on how the series had gone and what we would have liked for it to have done instead. Yeah. So, I, I'm looking forward to this discussion, man. Yeah. Um. Obviously. The moral arc is out at the moment in the Dragon Ball Super manga. Um, I've personally found it quite good. Once again, still not perfect, still a few flaws, but you know, it's been a lot of fun providing it ends well. I think you know, this could be on course to be Dragon Ball Super's best arc so far, even out doing the Future Trunks arc, which most people often, yeah, call. I'm you sorry. <laughs> Yeah, no, I was just about to agree with you. Um, I think, as comes to with a lot of the stuff between the manga and the anime, the differences that we get, obviously, when it comes to stuff that has actually been showcased in Super previously, we've had loads of cool story ideas. We've had actually a lot of interesting concepts and stuff that they've gone forward with, whether it's, you know, the gods with the Zamasu arc or the Tournament of Power and having everybody have to entertain yeah. for the sake of being possibly having their universe destroyed. Yeah. And so, it, you know... To have that, the story's been uh, pretty good, but then you've had moments where the fights haven't seemed quite so good, or oh, people have missed some of the brutality and stuff. Now, if yeah. you look at the manga with Moro, we've had more of the brutality and less of the story. Yeah. So I think it's just a bit of a balancing act at the moment. Yeah, it seems like they're hyping up one part of the franchise or part of the thematics and basically missing out on the others. Um, the yeah. story in the Future Trunks arc, you've got to say the, the story was quite good. It wasn't consistent by any means, but it was pretty good it was quite complex but well it was it yeah it wasn't exactly consistent and then yeah. at the very end was where it kind of all went off the rails but yeah. generally speaking had you been watching the entire thing from the beginning not knowing how that arc was going to end then theoretically you'd have been sat there going wow the storytelling is really good in this yeah. you know it's only when you realize how much they've ripped themselves into a hole that you went oh, oh yeah. okay uh yeah um like I said, providing the moral arc ends well, I think if they give Moro a bit more backstory, if they maybe I think they need to kill somebody off. I think that Dragon Ball's seriously lacking tension at the moment. We know Moro yeah. is extremely powerful, but there's a lot of other beings that can basically just kill him with ease. Zeno, Zeno's gods, the angels, potentially Beerus. I know that's debatable, but you know. It kind of just takes away the tension knowing that even if Goku and Vegeta lose, these other characters could just come in. Just like in the Future Trunks arc, Zamasu beat Goku and Vegeta when he became um, immo not immortal Zamasu, infinite Zamasu, and then Zeno came and wiped him out. <laughs> um, but hopefully that doesn't happen with Moro. I know he's about to fight an angel now, so he could potentially get beat, but I'm hoping Moro finds a way to keep the arc going and, you know, hopefully remove from the equation the other beings that can actually just wipe him out easily and raise the tension maybe killing someone like beerus if beerus comes and gets killed i think that really raises the stakes well i thought it would actually be quite interesting at some point first off actually i just want to mention in the chat loads of people are basically agreeing just saying one of the main things they needed to fix was the future trunks arc so it seems like everybody kind of felt unanimously like that arc was pretty damn good but it needed fixing toward the end yeah. um but my my kind of idea we're going into all of this was that some of well, i've completely forgotten what i was going to say now because <laughs> i got distracted by the chat but um when we were talking about uh the the way that some of these arcs could have ended and just so many of them had different ways that people actually expected them to go in one thing for i'll quite happily sit here and sort of raise my hand and take the blame i was absolutely 100 percent de dead cert that the tournament of power of timer was going to expire because i was like why else do they bother putting a timer on it otherwise yeah, a waste but concepts, you know yeah. <laughs> um yeah, yeah ended up going to anything um, personally with the future trunks arc i didn't actually have a problem with the direction they took for the ending 
I think the manga version of that chapter was far better than the animated chapter. I think Agreed. that kind of story... Agreed. Toy Taro yeah, definitely did that better. Yeah, the, uh, I think that arc fits more of what the manga medium can... It fits the uh, advantages of the manga medium, whereas the Tournament of Power, which is all action, more suits an anime, yeah. because obviously it has more of a cinematic effect. They can build drama and put on really cool fights, whereas a manga can only really de depict it in a picture. I know a picture paints a thousand words, but a video depicts a million. Um, so Apparently my volume's a little bit louder than yours, so you might want to go into OBS and just knock down the volume of myself a little bit. Sure. Um, I just thought maybe you're shouting, I don't know. <laughs> um, but <laughs> I'll sit further away from the yeah, microphone. Just turned you down, so hopefully, <laughs> hopefully uh, that's, that's a lot better now. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think the Future Trunks are definitely better in the manga because it's more of a story, whereas the Tournament of Power is just more action. I mean, well, also, if we're going to get slightly, uh, slightly, you know, uh, if we're going to look at it objectively, then, of course, Toyo Taro technically wrote this for the second time because he technically did this with Dragon Ball AF with uh, Toy Ball. I mean, it's basically the same story yeah. as it was with Zykor and yeah. uh, that um, the uh, female Kai, whichever the uh, name he gave her in that. <laughs> but uh, but the story is almost identical. So this is basically his, uh, his final draft. <laughs> yeah. So it's no real surprise they did it better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so I'll just read a few of these messages and then we'll just see to what see what people are saying. Everybody's saying hello, hello everybody. And somebody's asking volume is hurting people's ears. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry, dude. <laughs> uh, Geek Freak says I did something like this, pointing out the flaws in the series. I'm guessing he's released videos himself. Wexer Exa said, remove ROF, make Goku smarter, give Jiren and character. Um, yeah, ROF was terrible. Um, it was an enjoyable movie, but it weren't good. It weren't good. I mean, to be honest, I, I really, uh, I really, um, I can really relate to the whole make Goku smarter side of things yeah. as well, because, like, you know, does. I, I've personally always been a fan of silly Goku, you know, it, from Dragon Ball, when you start it from Dragon Ball, you kind of just get used to that silly Goku. So by the time that Dragon Ball Z comes around and he's not really all that silly anymore at all, yeah. except for the odd moment in filler arcs yeah. or even like whether it was driving schools or, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, he wasn't too silly in the actual story, but that was just because we'd seen him maturing and getting older. Yeah. Whereas of course, you know, th that was supposed to have been the case for people that had been enjoying Dragon Ball. Here's where the story ends. The characters have all grown up and done different things. Yeah. Then when they decided to do Super and aim it at a younger audience, when they realized that they weren't going to have Goten and Trunks in so much of it, they decided to dumb Goku down to a kid's yeah. level. And I think that's really damaged it, in my opinion. Well, they tried a similar thing with Dragon Ball GT, didn't they? They made him a kid to kind of appeal to a younger audience, and <laughs> it turned most of the <laughs> With a mature personality. <laughs> yeah, with a mature person. It's a granddad in a kid's body. Um, it just didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work. But, um, yeah, I guess I've done a similar thing. I do like the goofy side of Goku, so I don't mind it too much. I can get over it. For me, Goku's kind of just like a flat character where all the other characters show all the growth. Um, but ultimately, yeah, I wouldn't mind him being a bit more adult. I mean, even though Heroes is absolute trash, Xeno Goku is actually <laughs> quite fun to watch. Um, he's a lot more mature. Well, he's just more mature than <laughs> mature than um, yeah. Super Goku. I guess he is based off the GT Goku. But So that kind of answer is now a um, great granddad in a adult body. But um, yeah, it's it's definitely something worth looking into. I mean, they need to make Trunks and Goten grow up as well. I mean, I think they need to realize as well that Dragon Ball's audience has grown up, so they need to make the series yeah. itself grow up while still finding a way to appeal to a younger audience, but not making it for a younger audience. Because yes, yeah, I agree. Younger audiences are probably well. I'd actually. Sorry, finish what you were uh, saying. Younger audiences are probably more likely to watch something like My Hero Academia now. Than yeah. Probably Dragon Ball. And it's not y that yeah. Dragon Ball can't be as good as something like My Hero Academia. But, you know, I just think 
Dragon Ball needs that bloodshed. It's just that that's the kind of thing it is. I mean, it's overpowered alien WWE, basically, isn't it? So, <laughs> yeah, it is. So, I mean, to be perfectly honest, the way that I kind of want them to 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 go forward is if they're going to. Uh, this is going to spoil one of my future videos, so, you know, <laughs> if you're around here and you, you watch any of my content, thank you, but, you know, sorry that this is going to ruin a future video, but um, what, one of the things I really want them to do is if they're not going to move past the end of Z, which I do actually think they will do, especially Toyotaro, because yeah. he's got the experience in messing around post-GT that he did with AF, yeah. um, but what I actually think that they should do is, because Goku's obviously going to end up... Uh, getting his master's gi before the end of Z and he's going to have his little fight with Uber as he grows up. Yeah. The the real sort of thing they should do at this point is te uh, is have an arc where Goku is learning how to be a teacher. Yeah. So he needs to mature a bit and he needs to be able to maybe open his own little training school or something. Yeah. Not too serious, just maybe like the same thing he did with uh, the Turtle Hermit yeah. where he had Goku and Krillin. Goku would uh, end up you know, getting these, a couple of his own people to uh, train and stuff maybe they're human maybe one of them's a child of Broly and chi -Lai, who knows yeah. but you know you can end up doing this kind of thing and uh then you have a, a little arc based around the friends of those people that he's training and then the dragon ball cast enter it sporadically so they're not constantly in it and that way you can kill off a couple of maybe the humans in that so and then that will add tension so basically a dragon ball Bruto. Uh, I don't watch Boruto, but I guess I get <laughs> yeah, probably. It's basically, it's basically Naruto's son, but, you know, Naruto and Sasuke eventually, well, they do come into it and they are seeming to get into it more and more. But um, the cast is still there, but they're no longer the central point of the story anymore. But no, I, then, I, yes, think, yeah, I, think, what I, mean. I think that kind of arc would be perfect for Goku, given that bit of development, but in a way that's natural for Goku to develop. Um yeah. It would also help with Goten and Trunks as well, because, you know, then they're yeah. doing that. Because one of the, uh, a lot of people's favorite parts of Dragon Ball Z was watching Gohan teach Videl how to fly and use yeah. Ki, and Go Goten's involvement with that. And personally, I really enjoyed that. Yeah. And if they were to make that more of a sense of focus of the arc, uh, and then Goku kind of, you know, he can make some mistakes because he's not teaching people certain things, or he's teaching people certain things, and then they're going out there and using it maybe... He's teaching somebody, they use it, um, some of his techniques for, you know, evil or whatever. Um, of course, they're going to be doing it on the sly, because who the hell is going to try and pick a fight with Goku? So you've got different storylines that you can go with in that direction, but it evades the whole repetitive, uh, repetitive system that we've been seeing happening with all of the, the villains as of late. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, let's read a few more of these live chat comments. Darwin Byrne says, in my opinion, the only arc that needs fixing is the future Trunks arc. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that, that's a controversial opinion. I, I would say future Trunks arc is the best in Super, taking out, um, obviously, the current Moro arc in the manga. I think the Battle of Gods arc suffered because we'd already seen it as a film. But that I think if I've spoken to people who just watched Dragon Ball Super and not seen Battle of Gods and they enjoyed the Battle of Gods arc, I think the anime probably didn't do it <laughs> Sorry. I said I didn't realise those people existed. Yeah, um, yeah, they do, they do. Um, I think the anime probably didn't do it enough credit. I thought it dragged it on a little bit too long. I thought 15 episodes was a bit too long for that arc, essentially for what is just a an hour and a half movie. Um, and the movie yeah. didn't really cover it in detail. It kind of just did, kind of just covered it to make sure it was part of the continuity um, and covered the changes of that particular arc. Um, but the Resurrection of F was rubbish. They could really have done a lot more of Resurrection of F. The manga didn't really cover that arc, though there is a pro no. arc of it that covers it up to the actual battle, um, which I probably will be covering on my channel soon, actually. But um, that arc... To did Toyotaro up. did do a... He did do... It, the reason it wasn't covered in the Super manga was because he'd actually done like a, a manga version of it. Yeah. The, um, yeah. Very, very briefly. Yeah. The, it leads up to the uh, the battle, and then it just says... <laughs> find out the rest of the the fight in the battle in the actual battle in the movie itself um I mean, <laughs> did it i've yeah. got it's been so long since i looked at it now yeah. i just could just kind of accepted and remembered it actually being yeah. there so there you go that's how impressive resurrection f was <laughs> yeah a, a lot of people say it's not canon because he didn't write it he mainly drew the panels for it but it essentially follows the exact things in the movie and i think um the manga kind of does follow 
more what Toriyama has done with Toro, Toyo Toro adding his additions here and there, whereas the, the anime just does what it wants. I mean, the anime just had Gotenks be involved for absolutely no reason and get battered as a Super Saiyan 3. Well, he didn't get battered. He, he literally did one attack and then defused. <laughs> um but, yeah. I think they probably would have stretched that out for a few episodes more had the ratings been better, but I probably, think the, yeah. the animators was in such a hurry to yeah. move past that arc because they were yeah. all burned out and they didn't want to keep working on the same thing that they'd already yeah. done. Uh, so at the time, I think it was probably just, a, oh, let's do this. That'll be kind of different. Uh, oh, but we can't have him do too much, can we? Because we want to bring Vegeta in to kill Togoma and all this stuff. So yeah. I think it was just a case of, let's do this to kill some time, make the animators happy. Yeah. And then they realized that they had nowhere to go with it, so they had to get rid of him. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know. But, but um, I mean, it's interesting because Toriyama, of course, is now taking... Uh, so, as far as we know, Toriyama's not really had any input other than just overseeing what Toriyama has done with the Morrow arc. So yeah. he's just kind of sent him his notes and said... Uh, do I need to change anything? Yeah. And then Toriyama's basically just gone, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it definitely seems like Toriyama's in the driving seat with that arc. Um, but yeah, um, back to the original thing. Um, in terms of those, they were movers and everyone had already seen them. But, you know, the the Universe 6 arc weren't great. It was better than what we had got. But I think the Battle of Gods movie definitely suffered because we'd all seen it before. And then I'd say the Future Trunks arc was... One of the better arcs. The tournament power was exciting and fun to watch. It was quite hype while I was watching it, but it was just like watching, like I said, overpowered alien WWE. Um, so it was like a Royal Rumble match. It was, just, <laughs> it was the Royal Rumble, wasn't it? I mean, it, Ultra Instinct was yeah, cool, but it had very little context. I'd actually say the episodes leading up to the tournament of power were better than the tournament of power, apart from the fight against Kefra and Jiren. But you know. The Broly movie was good. It's hard, it's isn't it? Movie, you know. Yeah, um, I mean, it's difficult because I, I'm not going to lie because I, I rewatch Dragon Ball Super quite frequently because yeah. uh, because my stepson really likes it and my baby likes the colours. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I tend to have it on because it's on pop so you know you'll yeah. be changing the channel and boom, Dragon Ball Super's on and I'm going, well, I'm not going to change the channel. Yeah. So I leave it on and they watch it and in hindsight, I have to say, I find myself watching and enjoying a lot of the episodes back from the Tournament of Power and from the Future Trunks arc. Yeah. So when they pop, when they come up, like you know, it, it's uh, a it's a sight for sore eyes. The Universe Six arc, as you were saying a minute ago, yeah, it did. It was fun at the time because it was new content. Yeah. Um, and we didn't know what was going to happen in the next episodes because that was around the period of time where the anime actually overtook the manga in its release. And so uh, as we were reading the manga, we kind of got to the beginning of the Universe 6 arc. We saw the introduction of Kaba and the Universe 6 team. And then before you know it, the, the anime was ahead. And then that was kind of where we were sort of going, right, so then what's going to happen? Who's, uh, who's Goku going to fight? Is Goku going to be eliminated from the tournament? Is he going to come back in? Yeah. Um, is Gohan going to turn up? Blah, blah, blah. People were speculating loads. But ultimately, of course, the hype outdid the actual result of the show. Yeah. <laughs> it went in the complete st like cardboard box yeah. idea that we had. Yeah. Goku was going to get reinstated, you know? Yeah, yeah the hype uh, overpowered the actual context of the story. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I don't, I don't think... But, I mean, Dragon Ball Super Over get Dragon Ball Super Over gets, like, too much love or too much hate. It's like dualism people don't seem to have a middle ground i thought dragon ball was good but it was bad in quite a lot of areas and averaged out to a fun show um but also i just think it could it has a lot of potential all the ideas that come out in dragon ball super like the multiverse the angel zeno etc i feel like it's a hologram of a great idea but it doesn't yeah. have that much substance to it and i feel like they could just explore that hologram and really flesh it out and they don't just have to do it with Goku's story if you know what I mean I think it's time for them to branch yeah. out maybe some side stories maybe give I mean the Universe Six Saiyans could be a fun story I mean I know a lot of people don't like the Universe Six Saiyans but the legendary oh, assassin hit give him a backstory um Jiren in the Pride Troopers give them a story um we could even go as far as the Ginyu Force and Captain Ginyu's original body yeah. and uh who was the uh, the last member of the Ginyu Force before yeah. Jace and all this kind of stuff. There are so many things they can do. The universe for Dragon Ball is yeah. so massive, no it pun has, intended. It has so much potential. I think that's what keeps us hooked, even when the context yeah, isn't that, that that's great. It. 
Um, but it's interesting <laughs> as well because Dragon Ball is obviously a 1980s, 1990s story. And that's what Toriyama essentially is, is a, an 80s, 90s writer. And it's more sandbox scripted yeah. rather than the real in-depth convoluted scripts you get now. Um, I think even the anime and manga well, this mediums have kind of come up a level, but they've had something to improve from, whereas Toyama was one of the earlier adopters. Um, so yeah. Well, it's surprising, really, when you think about it, because, of course, back in the day, the reason he was writing things without an end game in sight was because he was doing it weekly. Well, now he's just lazy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he can sit down there and kind of go, right, well, I've got three days. Let's sit down with a notepad and pen and no, let's yeah. plan out where this is going to go. Yeah. And he just kind of goes, ah, you know, <laughs> just again, classic Toriyama. Ah, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. But uh, I've got an interesting topic we can kind of go on from here as well, like fixing Dragon Ball Super. Given the fact that the chances are they're actually going to keep the Dragon Ball Super moniker because obviously yeah. they they named the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie Dragon Ball Super Broly, yeah. so it wasn't like Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball Broly Z. It wasn't like Resur Resurrection of F or Battle of Gods where it still had the Z in it. Um, so as assuming that they're going to go forward with the Dragon Ball Super name again, then um, what would you like them to do to help fix it? In, by bringing in new villains. Do you want to see them reboot more villains like they did with Broly, like maybe with Baby or Cooler or Janemba? Um, or do you want to see them just go in a new direction? I don't... I would... I'd, I'd rather, I do prefer new original stories, but I'm not a hater of rebooting villains. Um, I, I mean, we Bro saw Broly together, so we yeah. know that we both enjoyed it. Yeah, um, <laughs> Broly was fun. It was great. I, they brought him back in a good way, whereas Freezer wasn't brought back in a good way. But Freezer did kind of make up for it later in the series by being good in the Tournament of Power. But Yeah, um, he was worth it all for that, in yeah. my opinion. I know a lot of people would have preferred Boo, but I was so glad that yeah. Freezer was on their team. Yeah, I mean, this arc, feature, the moral arc, features Boo quite a lot, doesn't it? So maybe that's what they had in mind the whole time. But um, Maybe. Depends how, how advanced they were with that particular... Well, story. actually, no, because Toriyama is writing this. I know that Tor Toriyama didn't... <laughs> I know that he didn't plan that far ahead. He can't even plan the end of his stories. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's true, very true. Um, but maybe have a ratio of two new original villains and one rebooted character and keep going ahead with that kind of pattern. I think that would be fun. Reboot Cool. I think Cool has definitely got to be the next one if they're going to reboot anybody. Um I thought I thought maybe uh, Baby or even um, yeah. the uh, the Shadow Dragons because those things were so interesting concept to GT. Yeah. But the interesting thing here is that obviously the reason they've said that there's no new Dragon Ball Super at the moment is because Toei are afraid of repeating what happened with GT. Yeah. And so they're waiting for Toriyama's input. Well, consequently, what they could do if Toriyama still doesn't give them any more input and they're worried that the Dragon Ball Fire will die out a little bit as the hype declines, which we all have to admit it has done, yeah. what they could do is take what they learned from GT mm. and then t transform that into Super, but just not make it so definitively. So like, don't don't make it so it's... Uh, the problem with the Shadow Dragons thing was where do you where the hell do you go from there in the story? Like that was a really cool arc, but that's that's the end. It is, you a know, final arc. <laughs> that would be the last arc, you know. Yeah. So uh, where do you go from there? So you could still do Baby, and you could still do the whole Sephurian or Tuffle uh, side of things because of course they had the the Tuffle in Universe Two uh, at in the Tournament of Power. So you know they they are referencing the fact that these characters and these species exist. Yeah. So it's interesting to see where they could go with it going forward. Yeah. Um, they could equally make parallel worlds and just make GT sort of canon. I know a lot of people won't like that, but I'm not a hater of Dragon Ball GT. Well, it's the, Dragon Ball GT... It's what the games do. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's what Heroes has done. I mean, Heroes, even more than GT and Super, is a good hologram of an idea, but no sense yeah. whatsoever. Whereas Super and... GT at least have a bit of context, a bit of substance. <laughs> Heroes has none at all. But yeah. the idea, like, I really enjoyed episode 25 of the Heroes promotional anime. Not because it was good writing or anything in that regard. It was just seeing Super Saiyan 4 Goku and Super Saiyan Blue Goku fight together. I thought it was really cool to watch. I popped. Popped massively from that. But, you know, if they, if they brought them together cleverly, it could work. I mean, DC have done it all the time. Like, Infinite Crisis... Christ on Infinite Worlds, bring different versions of Superman together, different versions of Batman, and they all fight a common enemy, and it works. It's fun. They could do that. 
Kang Buff Kangaroo says, "Just make Dragon Ball Heroes canon and make it twenty minutes long." No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> I appreciate the idea that you're getting at, um, but you know they'd have to start again, and not that they're worried about throwing away the wonderful, legitimate story of Dragon Ball Heroes that they've come with so far. Yeah. But you know, I think uh, what they really need to do, personally, and I mean this is this is linking back to what we we're talking about at the beginning. Uh, when we look at the Morrow arc as a whole, it, it screams so many issues to me that we're talking about with the lack of story and too much brutality or too much violence, too much fighting, I'm not doing this. Obviously, the, the Dragon Balls have become somewhat redundant because even when even when they start looking, going, right, okay, these are the new Dragon Balls, we've got to look all around the universe for them, they're the size of planets, go, go find them. Somebody turns around and goes, yeah, but I've already found all six. I just got one more to get. You know, it's just, it's not really about the Dragon Balls anymore. No. So we've lost that. We can't go back on that now. It's not going to do a GT because the, the Dragon Ball, the uh, Black Star Dragon Ball arc was everybody's least favorite part of GT. Um, and then when you get to looking at what they could do going forward, they need to focus on the stories. They need to focus yeah. on the smaller characters, because that's the only way they're going to get more stories out there, because there's not a whole lot left that they can tell with Goku, that they can tell with Vegeta. We know these characters inside out now. Yeah. We know their backstories. Uh, we know multiple of Goku's backstories. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we know so many of all these characters. We've met them in Dragon Ball, and we've met them in Dragon Ball Z and Super, and they've all become part of the main cast. And so there's very little that we can do without bringing in new characters to explore their stuff, unless we were to go to things, as we were saying earlier, like going to Universe 6, going to all these other places. I wouldn't mind seeing a whole season about the Pride Troopers, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I think that would be it. I mean, even if they wanted to take a break between arcs, let's say they do cover the Moro arc in the anime, I mean, it's going to be a very long arc. The, the longest manga, manga arc is the Moro arc. It's, how, yeah. how, I think it's like 20 chapters long now, whereas the Tournament of Power is only 15 chapters or something around there. So if they are to do the Morrow arc in the anime, it's, I mean, in the anime, the Tournament of Power was the longest arc. I think it was something like 50 episodes or something like that. So how long could the Morrow arc be? 70-odd episodes. But then between arcs, between this arc and the next, just do a, a backstory of Jiren and the Pride Troopers or the legendary assassin Hit or create new stories with the Universe Six Saiyans or do Yamoshi tell us his story, something like that. Um, I mean, Toyotaro pokes a bit of fun at the fact that King Chopper might have been the guy that um, raised Oob, like, and taught yeah. him martial arts and stuff. Yeah. And uh, I wouldn't mind seeing a bit of that, because there are so many people that are desperate to see some Oob stuff. Yeah. And if they don't want to go past the end of Z, then the best thing to do is to show us Oob training at the moment. I mean, he's um, in... Uh, it was in the, uh, the, the Tournament of Power build-up, I think, when, yeah. in the manga where uh, Goku... Uh, wanted to see some of the people down there, and Dende was like, well, what about this guy? He's the resurrection of Majin Buu, yeah. but he's very young, and he's he's not mastered his skills yet. So then Goku was like, all right, well, I'll keep my eye on him. Yeah. So what they could do is just do a small arc about Oob, even if it's just like a chapter long or something. Yeah. I would like that. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I'm... They, they I, I want him to be Nam's just... son. <laughs> yeah, they do need to... I want everything to come full circle. Yeah. I mean, they've got, to, they've got to cover the end of Z soon. I mean, the Morrow arc, they can only be, what, two years away from the end of Z now at a minimum? Um, yeah. Something I mean, close, Battle, yeah. It's Battle something ridiculously close. Years after uh, Majin Buu. And um, then, the then there's been Resurrection of F. I think Goku and Vegeta were training for six to nine months on Whis's planet. Then I think uh, there was quite a quick turnaround for the uh, Universe 6 tournament. Then a bit of time passed for the Future Trunks arc. Then a bit of time passed for the Tournament of Power. A bit of time passed for the Broly movie. And a bit of time passed until the Morrow arc. They've got to be really close now in terms of being... They, have, they are. They You're absolutely see. right. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I don't think the Morrow arc is even close to finishing yet. I think it's still got a bit more legroom. And I'm hoping they do start bringing in some story context. I don't trust Miras at all. I've got a feeling he's going to... Yeah. Take got a feeling he's going to turn a heel at any moment um I'm, i mean i'm just... not sure because like you know i i think that they might reveal something that is sort of indicative of a later arc but i do think there's going to be a case where this arc is just going to suddenly end and everybody's going to sit there going oh well it started off all right but then it just kind of fell off 
Um, but the interesting thing was in uh, in one of the the last chapters. Uh, actually, hang on before I go into that. Uh, how do, do you assume that all your subscribers are clued up, or do we uh, not go into spoilers? Um, yeah, most of my followers are generally clued up. Most of my videos are concerned in the latest videos of the manga. So okay, <laughs> um, I mean it's. Well, then, you know, small warning that we're going to talk about some stuff now. But um, in the last chapter, um, I reread it earlier. And uh, when Piccolo's sort of trying to suss out how Moro's actually got his powers, and he's like, oh, you know, won't uh, Gohan says, won't he uh, split in 30 minutes anyway? Because that's what 7-3's rules were or whatever. Yeah. And uh, Moro says, no, now they've returned home. There is no time limit. Yeah. Um, and that was kind of interesting to me because I was thinking, well, does that mean that this is actually Morrow's true form rather than Morrow's merged form? Like, you know, is this is this what he was supposed to be all along? Um, yeah. And the, it kind of... I'm really curious as to know, is this possibly uh, saying that he was... Uh, Morrow was a, uh, a god of destruction and split himself into loads of different pieces so that he wouldn't be erupted when uh, Zeno sort of erased his universe and... Yeah. Was uh, was Miris his uh, attendant or something? Yeah, I mean that would be a great story. I mean they still haven't got truly round to how Moro actually escaped from the Galactic Patrol prison, and Miris just happened to be there. It is a bit odd, isn't it? Um, yeah, they said that Miris was there because the Grand Priest yeah. had uh, asked him to watch or something like that, and because he was so good, he rose through the ranks. And it it says that why what was he watching? Like you know, I said the Grand Priest and everybody can watch from where they are. I mean, <laughs> they've got those little pole staffs thing. They don't need to actually go there. So, um, I did see one theory in one of my comment sections to one of my videos. People are theorizing that Miris freed Morrow because he wants to displace Weiss and Beerus for the Universe Seven Angel and God of Destruction. That would be a pretty interesting turnaround. I mean, he is on Beerus's planet now. What if he seals them somehow? <laughs> Um, becomes the angel. Be I'm not sure the Grand Priest would allow that, but maybe there's a rule that says if you, you know, find a way to get rid of these two, you can take the place because he is an, an an angel in training, is a trainee. So maybe that's what his intention is. Uh, Blackscape's in the chat as well. He says, oh, "I want Miras to kill Moro and get arrested for it, <laughs> and then have the next arc be a Save Miras arc where the Dragon Ball crew fright, fights their way through the angels to save him." I mean that would be interesting. It's probably not going to happen, but it would it would certainly be fun to watch. Though, nevertheless, as so many of these things would be, that's the trouble, isn't it? Yeah, we all want to see everything happen. Yeah. We want to see every possible circumstance get realised, but yeah. it's not going to happen that way. Yeah. I mean, I I think you know uh, that's that's something maybe a fan manga would happen of, and then Blackscape could uh, read that and add his own bits into it, and then it can be the Blackscape arc. The Blackscape <laughs> arc. Um, yeah, it would be fun. I mean, the next. The next le tier level of power is the angel tier of power because they're pretty much at God of Destruction tier powers now anyway, or around that level. So, you know, it would be progress in terms of the power scaling for the people who care about that. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's just, I am interested to see where Miris goes because it just all seems too convenient, Miris being there, Moro escaping, Moro getting this kind of power. I mean, I know it, I know there's a low chance given Morris just turned up to fight him, but you never know. He could say, you're not really a galactic patrolman, are you? And he's like, no. And then they reveal the truth. I think that would be a good way of subverting the story. But, you know, I just don't want the story to finish here. I don't want it to finish on Earth. That's what I don't want in terms of... Uh... I had I had the same fear when Goku Black turned up. Um, as soon as, like, Trunks came back into the past and then Goku Black followed him with using his time ring, I was like... They're not going to just beat him up here, are they? Like, he's not going to come through the time vortex and di literally just get bodied by the main cast. Yeah. But then when he ended up being sucked back through the time portal, I did start to think, well, you know, that could be a pretty cool thing. Like, maybe they'll go into the future to fight him. And they did. Yeah. So, you know, there's me sort of saying, well, they probably won't fight through the angels. There is a chance that they could do. It's just that I really don't see them... I really don't see them turning Whis or Vados or anything on anybody now because they've built them up as a good guy for too long. Um, I, they don't really do that. They don't really take beloved characters and then t make them evil. Uh, yeah, true. Obviously, yeah, they I mean, did it with Vegeta. But then again, within a couple of issues, <laughs> he overcame Barbadi's mind control again and uh, yeah. done good. So I don't really see anybody doing it on their own 
yeah, terms because they, they wouldn't be salvageable. They wouldn't be able to turn good again in the end because nobody would ever trust them. Yeah, I guess the crux of the Dragon Ball story is Goku turning bad guys good. <laughs> so yeah. that, that would, not guess, the other way around. Not the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> um. Pisses them off so much that they're like, you know what? No, I don't want to. Don't want to watch your universe anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I'm turning off God Tube. <laughs> Turns Zeno bad. Forgot to get any times after. Give you a chance. Um, but yeah, I think um, that's why that's... there's two of them, so he can rub the other one. And yeah. we're like, no, nope, no, nope, we've got one of them likes Goku, the other one hates yeah. him. <laughs> yeah. We'll have a Zeno off. I think um, that's something I want. Something I want to talk about as well is uh, the structure of Dragon Ball Super. In Z, the villain was always the most powerful being known in, in, in existence to obviously the people relevant from their perspective. Freezer was kind of portrayed as the strongest in the universe. He, obviously, he wasn't. Beerus was out there, but obviously, he didn't exist at that point of the story, at least narratively. He did it. You know what I mean? He did exist, <laughs> but. At the same time, he wasn't conceived of. Um, yeah. So Freeze was kind of portrayed as this big bad, one of the strongest in the universe. Then Cell came along and Cell was stronger than everybody. Then Boo came along and he's from the past and he's the strongest. He's even defeated gods. Obviously, the gods' destructions, like I said, weren't conceived of there. The yeah. gods of creations were put forward as these extremely strong beings, but the Saiyans were even stronger than those. And then obviously Boo became the strongest and the villain was the strongest. If if the Z Warriors lost, everything went to shit. That's how it was kind of put. No matter what, if you if Goku and the gang lose now, everything's going to hit the fan. But now, Beerus is there. Reese is there. Uh, the angels are there. I know angels aren't supposed to interfere in Mortal Affairs, and Zeno is there. So, like I, like I said at the earlier part of the stream, I just feel like they've got to remove this current structure from Dragon Ball Super because it's holding up the story. Whereas Z, every time they, like I said, every time they encountered a villain, they were the strongest and it worked. It really worked for Z because the tension was really high in Z no matter which arc it was, no matter what you thought of that arc. You're always like, shit, they lose. They're all done for. I mean, even in the yeah. Saiyan saga, like <laughs> Raditz w technically was the strongest on Earth when he arrived there and then Vegeta was even stronger than him and it's, it always just got higher and higher, and you're like, who's going to beat him if Goku doesn't? But now it's just like, well, if Goku doesn't, technically... <laughs> so many other people, take your pick. <laughs> yeah, Bro if Broly's on the other side of the universe, if, I mean, I don't know, I mean, I'm suspe I suspect Broly may have surpassed, I mean, sorry, Moro may have suspect surpassed Broly it currently, I'm not 100% sure on that, but if Moro does... Well, we haven't got enough to compare it to, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, if Moro does defeat the Z Warriors, he's still got to go and defeat Broly or Beerus or the Grand Priest if he doesn't want this person running the universe. He could just arrive. Or Zeno could just... Well, the, the trouble no, also is that uh, it's... Uh, in... Sorry. Sorry. No, you carry on. I was just about to say that the, the real trouble is we have no idea what their end game is. So the villains are kind of there and yeah, I see what you're saying. Like, you know, there's always somebody ready with a safety net sort of go, oh, don't worry, Goku, if you don't catch him, I will. But the, the trouble is with this is the fact that uh, Moro, for instance, doesn't have an end game. Jiren didn't have a clear end game. None of these villains have really got this kind of, okay, well, I'm going to do all this and then what? You know, yeah. so when Moro has eventually killed uh, the, the warriors or whatever and sapped their power and eaten it, um, then what's he going to do? Is he going to then go in search of the other universes? Is his idea to kind of like, you know, is it like some sort of defense barrier where the guys are trying to stop him from getting further so then he doesn't go and eat all the other universes or or what? You know, there's a very distinctive issue there with what is going to happen after they lose. And if you don't know, it might just actually be worth him letting, uh, <laughs> just letting him win and then eating you. And then if he's going to go away and be like, you know what, that was a good meal, I'm going to go to sleep. Then what's the problem? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like they could save the day just by dying yeah there's no as grim as that would be yeah there's no overarching end game i guess you could say yeah um but yeah maybe i mean there was with zamasu and that was why it worked yeah um yeah definitely i think i think the problem with the future trunks arc is zamasu wasn't the problem he probably 
you kind of like carried that arc really i mean everything that came with zamasu was, goku black zamasu and merge zamasu etc but um you kind of he was a fantastic antagonist yeah. i mean he was i don't think super's ever hit the heights of even z as well i'd probably personally i would say the boo arc's the worst arc in z even though i enjoyed it i'd probably say it's probably the weakest arc in z especially in terms of context i mean I don't think even Future Trunks arc really hit the hit the heights of even the Boo arc, but I think Merge Zamasu is actually a better villain than Boo. Um, not Merge Zamasu, just as Zamasu. Oh yeah. In, in overall, even actually, he's even better than Cell. Um, but the rest of like, I don't even like, think Cell's that good of a bad guy to be honest. Like I think Cell's really drastically wasn't. overrated. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure he's as good as Frieza, but and obviously Vegeta, but I think I think he's worthy of being a Z level villain. I'd even say Baby Vegeta was from GT as well, but um, yeah, the Orcs. Yeah, I mean he he stuck around. He stuck the test of time. Yeah. We, considering the amount of people that dislike GT, the yeah. fact that so many people still like Baby and they still ask for Baby as DLC in all the games and stuff, yeah. and they want him to be rebooted. Yeah, he stood the test of time, so he's he should be up there. Yeah, but um, yeah, I feel like Zamasu carried his particular arc. I'd, I'd probably say Baby carried his arc as well, considering all the plot holes in them and the, the weaknesses of those arcs i can't actually remember my original point though so uh <laughs> um <laughs> um yeah no i get I, it keeps happening to me as well yeah. but uh, yeah i mean well, like yeah, i, so I see in, what you're saying like the over to, the overarching yeah that's it the um tomorrow is more the overarching end game it's just to it's just for the sake of it almost and i guess you can have a villain like that but it takes away from the tension and you know what? I don't really like the fact the story is at the moment for the Morrow arc is basically, uh oh, we get bodied, let's go away, get stronger. Uh oh, he's done it again, he's transforming this time. Let's yeah. go away and get stronger. Uh oh, yeah. he's done it again. And, you know, it's kind of, <laughs> it's becoming a bit of an annoying trope. What I want is I want story, I want yeah. lore, I want, um, you know, stuff like the, the King Piccolo arc in Dragon Ball where you had that horrific story about him and then you hear about what happened with. Master Roshi's master and uh, yeah. even um, Suru Senin's master and all this kind of stuff. Like it, it's re it was really cool in the sense that it laid everything out, told you how scary this guy was from the very beginning, and then even his henchman was intimidating. Like Tambourine was going yeah. around killing all the fighters from the tournament. Yeah. Like it was, it was, and there was nothing they could do about it because the henchman was really strong, and it was arguably the strongest person we'd seen at the time. Yeah, and so. It, that was the thing, like, you know, that that was what made King Piccolo even scarier, was the fact that if he was so much stronger than Tamarine, then we've got all of this. Yeah. What else is coming? And it's that what else is coming yeah. that's yeah. kind of missing at the moment, because there's no narrative, there's no story, it's yeah, just a fight. There's no real goals or consequences. I mean, the yeah. consequences is that they all die and they all become food for Morrow, but, <laughs> you know... Yeah, who did that? <laughs> you kind of want to envisage... A post, like the, the post world where everything's really bad, like the androids. Once they'd won, you knew that everything went to shit. If Freezer yeah. had won, you know that he's only going to carry on um, terrorizing the universe. If Boo had won, I mean, Boo's probably not the greatest example actually, but um, if Cell had won, it'd go round <laughs> trying to be more perfect than everybody else and just be really annoying and arrogant and. <laughs> It'd be really annoying for the rest of the universe. <laughs> Mer Zamasu, you knew he, he was going to wipe everyone out and create his own new world. So Because um, he even did it, you know, yeah, he, he did, did it. it. He, he killed he actually, everybody. He actually succeeded. And that's what I like about that arc is Zamasu actually won. Um But there's like He really a, did. There's like a post apocalyptic world which is led by these villains and what's Morrow's world? Is he's just gonna keep sucking the energy out of the planets? I mean I just He's just, he's just really fat in his. Yeah, he <laughs> becomes obese. <laughs> That's how they beat him. Just, this isn't even my final form. Yeah. It's, it's, like, it's like the Avengers that decide to time travel into like 20 years in the future and they find an obese Morrow who can't fight back. And, so, <laughs> and Morrow suddenly goes, you know what, guys? I'm going to stop eating these people and their energy. I'm going to join you guys. You guys seem to have it made. you got wives, kids, yeah. families. Yeah, I'm just going to settle in with you guys. I'm going to be a good guy now. I don't want to be fat. Yeah. <laughs> but... um. Yeah, I, th I think we're definitely on the same page as that. I don't know. They just 
need to add a bit more context in the later arts of these chapters. And I would even say, don't make this the final act, make it like, at, let's say it was five acts, it's the fourth act, the penultimate act before the final act. Maybe Moro goes off and maybe Moro beats them all, destroys Earth, leaves one of them alive and then goes off somewhere else and then maybe Goku has to beat, beat him somehow. Maybe Goku's the only survivor and Goku finds a way to defeat him. Um, I just don't want it to end on Earth. I think it would be a bit of an anti climax yeah. if it all ends now because it's just a bit well, too Well, they've got the Galactic Patrol, haven't they? I mean, like, I want to see this go f through other places in the universe. I want to see it to go to other places in the galaxy. Um, what needs to happen is Moro needs to retreat for whatever reason. Yeah. Uh, maybe he's, like, not had a meal from a planet in a, in a while and it's starting to, like, his magic energy is starting to be, like, sapped or something. Yeah. So he has to retreat and go somewhere else because he knows he's not got enough time to get all the energy off of Earth. And uh, so he has to bugger off somewhere and then they have to they chase him yeah. or something like that. And then it can end on different planets. It can be a battle that actually ends up constantly changing planets. Yeah. That would be cool, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I would, even some backstory on Morrow as well. Obviously, we know he wants to eat all these things, but why? How did he get this kind of magic in the first place? Is he just from a magical race or something like that? And maybe more of his backstory with the Dai Kai Shin. I mean... Majin Buu's been absent from this latter part of the arc. He's asleep, I think. Um, but yeah. Maybe he wakes up and gets back involved in the fight and starts reveal, revealing some home truths about Moro. Just that kind of thing, I think, could uh, knock the Moro arc up a notch. It's been a good arc, and I'd say, for considering this is Toyo Toro's first arc in the driving seat for Super, I know he's had a lot of input on the other arcs, but ultimately they were bullet points from Toriyama. Considering this is... To Toyo Toro's first talk, I'd say he's done a good job. I mean, obviously he needs to keep improving, but for a first arc, considering it's him in the driving seat, I'd say good job. Well, providing it ends well as well. <laughs> I don't if it falls yeah, off a cliff I, like there's a massive arc, then, uh, you know. I mean, it's, it's difficult really to explain because I was actually fully convinced that maybe Future Trunks, after they destroyed his timeline, was going to settle down in their timeline because yeah. they already knew who he was. Yeah. So why the hell did he go somewhere else yeah, that, and freak that, everybody else out going, ah, sense. there's two Trunks, two Mice! Yeah, that was just like plot stupidity though, weren't it? It makes absolutely no sense. I mean, it would have been interesting watching uh, Trunks adapt to this new world. I mean, how cool would it have been to see Future Trunks fight alongside Gohan in the Tournament of Power? That would have been awesome. And seeing a, a Future Trunks Gohan fusion. <laughs> yeah, um, I even did a video on uh, Future Trunks should have stayed around for the Tournament of Power. And I think I told you this when yeah. we were in the car to say a con. Yeah. Um, but one of the things was that it would have made perfect, it would have been perfect if Trunks had stayed around, fought on the team for Universe 7, maybe taken the place of Ten Shinhan or something. And then, bearing in mind all of his uh, problems in life had come from fighting uh the androids and all this kind of stuff so he finally made amends with android 18 in uh, yeah. dragon ball super that was a real i, I really did, was glad that they included that yeah. and then to stick around for the tournament of power android 17 of course wins the tournament of power trunks could have spent the entire tournament really not trusting him yeah. really really sort of going like oh, i'm watching you don't do anything stupid and all this kind of stuff and android 17 just playing up to it the old way because yeah. you know what he's like and then eventually, um, Android Seventeen is about to win the tournament of power, and they're like, you know, what's your what's your wish? And Trunks is absolutely like, you know, he's scared, he is bricking it. And Android Seventeen just looks up at him and sort of closes his eyes and turns around, and then says, "I want to restore, you know, all the universes and um, you know, respective timelines or whatever." Yeah. And then Trunks gets his timeline back, but when he goes back there, it's actually fixed and there's no damage from the androids and everything everything is perfect yeah. uh every, and he gets the family he wants his friends and his families are back and he sees goku and he sees his dad and that would have been a really satisfying climax to that arc and you'd have also had the ultimate irony for trunks being that android 17 saved his future yeah. and that really just makes it an entire redemption story yeah. that the androids that were evil in his his future became good yeah. in the other one and then actually consequently fixed his future. Yeah. And doesn't that just make it much more of a satisfying end? Yeah. Trunks would have had his fairy tale ending. Then you yeah. would have had everything like this. It would have been perfect. But, you know, hindsight, 2020, yeah. can't have what you know, hadn't thought of at the time. People's uh, character 
arcs come round full circle and the arcs bleed into each other. I mean, that's what Super probably hasn't done as much as what Z did, is the arcs weren't bleeding into each other, um, if you know what I mean. Yeah, um, yeah, no, I, I agree. I'll, I'll read some of these comments and then we'll probably wrap this up. It's definitely been fun and we're going to do more of these, so keep an eye out for them. Hell yeah. Right. Well, where was I? We, I read one of Black's, well, you read one of Blackscape's out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so Titanium666 says, Beerus could still get involved because his position is obviously challenged now. We look, would look like a complete fool if he loses Miras. Yeah, I mean, I made a video on that recently, why Miras is basically screwed Weiss and Beerus because he's under Weiss's supervision. Weiss actually asked the Grand Priest to actually look after him um, or to take him under his care, and now he's lost Miras. And it looks like Miras is about to break Angel Law. Um, so Weiss is going to look like an idiot, and Beerus is probably brought in by default because Weiss is his angel. Um, Wait, there's no way this arc ends without Miras getting rubbed. Like, Z Zeno's got to wipe him, surely, because he's breaking rules. He's deliberately not following orders. Yeah. He he's got to get erased. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we'll have to wait and see. Um, but surely Weiss is going to have to try and save him first, though, because, you know, Weiss took him into his own responsibility. Um, Yam God, watch it take a horrible twist when it's like uh, Morrow's been created by Wiesenbeerers to make entertainment for them while they eat. Yeah. Um, Yam Walenta says, Goku and Vegeta are going to need Beerus. It's going to take all of them minus Wies and Miris. Um Buff Kangaroo. He tries to, <laughs> he tries to kill <laughs> Zeno. I mean, Frieza, time to make the donuts. Yeah, Frieza has actually mentioned quite a few times he actually wants to take out the Omni King. And even the producer for the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie mentioned that Frieza's ambition is to kill the Omni King. Was that part of the uh, yeah. Toriyama original three hour script? I think that I think that could be a good overarching narrative for Dragon Ball Super is that Frieza is actually trying to kill the Omni King. Um, because one of Goku's final villains should probably be Frieza. I think that's probably how they're heading anyway. Or it all returns. Go or Goku manages to turn Frieza good. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't want Frieza to turn good. But yeah. what I do think is with the the moderation and stuff, because Frieza actually already listens to Beast, Beerus and Weiss. Beast. Beast. <laughs> Frieza already listens to Beerus and Weiss. Like you know, he already respects him and cowers them at their sight. Yeah. So doesn't that make him the perfect next contender for God, God of Destruction? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Broly's power, Titanium says Broly's power is something weird and confusing. You see in a movie in which it takes a certain degree of power to beat him, and a mo another movie comes out and takes way more power to beat, defeat him. I'm not <laughs> really sure what you're trying to get out there. Um, we also need to see more from Universe 6 Saiyan, says Azoji to Betu Quo. I, <laughs> I hope I pronounced that name right. I apologise if I I think you it. butchered that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I've got a new career in butchery. Um, <laughs> Buff Kangaroo says the llama vs Tori bot. Um, that's <laughs> why? Why are you even asking that question? Well, it's obvious he wins that. Um, Wild King Kanji says the guy that supposedly created Super Dragon Balls. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thanks. <laughs> Revolution says like, comment, subscribe, and hit bell. So make sure you do that. Um, Who's Bell, and why am I supposed to hit yeah. him? Okay, all right. Titanium misses Morrow's go face. Actually, I hate the new um, Morrow design. I actually don't like it. I, I, I'm not, as you know, I'm not a massive art buff. If is that even a phrase? I'm, I'm not massively into the artist sure. side of Dragon Ball. Um, but for the first time, I like artistically. I feel like the characters regressed. I understand why he looks like that because if you're going to merge two characters, they have to have features from both. But I just really preferred <laughs> Morrow's beast. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I really prefer Morrow's. Continue. <laughs> I really prefer Morrow's beast <laughs> look. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I don't like Morrow's new image. I'm sorry. I just laughed at Buff Kangaroo. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I've lost the stream. Um, Vegeta, <laughs> am I the only one who would like to see Dragon Ball adopt a new writing style? one that has a solid plan from the start to finish. Yeah, I mean, that's what we've been talking about in this stream, really, is it having more of an overarching narrative. Um, 
I guess the God of Destruction story is the overarching narrative, but it never seems to be getting to it. Goku versus Beerus, actually rivaling Beerus, like it mentioned at the beginning of the story. It's kind of just taking its time, too much time now, in my opinion. It's getting a bit redundant. That's why I think Beerus needs to be brought in and killed this off, because I'm getting bored of it. And I like Beerus. <laughs> but, um, yeah. But uh, No, I get you. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to... Yeah, I mean, because somebody... Hang on, just before... <laughs> Geekdom's here. <laughs> Hire new writers. <laughs> Hire new writers. <laughs> yeah. Hire new writers. Hire Geekdom 101 for continuity purposes. Sorry, what was you saying, Kanji? I was just about to say that, like, you know, they were saying um, the next God of Destruction should be picked by the Kaioshin to try and restore the Universe 7. I mean, that unless you're insinuating that there's a lack of balance due to the fact that Beerus falls asleep so he doesn't destroy as much as he needs to, then, like I was saying, Freezer would be the perfect God of Destruction successor. Yeah. Um, but, they, you know, realistically, I mean, Kaioshin's the other side of the balance because Kaioshin's the God of Creation. Yeah. So it's either not going to be a case of <laughs> Vegito Blue is stronger than Beerus. <laughs> There's just so, so many options for you to hear. You went into this, Shane was going like, oh, I'm not too interested in doing power scaling questions in this, but you're always going to get them, dude. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Didn't expect it to come from geekdom, though. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... But yeah, no, Freezer will be a good God of Destruction, and it would be interesting seeing him get used to the role of God of Destruction. Um, I think that would be quite funny. And stick to the comedic side of Dragon Ball. I mean, you know. I'm, uh, I'm in the middle of actually writing like a little mini arc for an episode, um, and uh, I, I'm actually judge I'm going to base it around the idea of doing uh, having a, an old character. I'm not going to say who because that's going to be a fun, uh, fun thing to look forward to. But I'm going to have an old character find a book on trying to revive the demon realm. And, uh, like, you know, open the gates to it and all this kind of stuff and find a new king for the demon realm. Because, of course, is no longer there. Um, Piccolo's no longer there. So th there's somebody obviously in charge at the moment, but we don't know who. Yeah. Um, and so the idea would be uh, somebody finds a book, an old dusty book, and they sort of, like, you know, dust it off. And it's the idiot's guide to the demon realm. And it's come from, like, Barbar's palace or something. And then they're basically opening this book and trying to figure out how to do all this kind of stuff. And that's why you manage to revive an old character. You, know, you get to bring an old character that hasn't been seen in ages with a grudge. And then you're going to take that character and give him a new purpose and just a bit of a comedic side story. Because, of course, it's if it, in Dragon Ball's fashion, if it doesn't have comedy in it, if it doesn't have stupid stuff like An Idiot's Guide to Doing Such and Such, then it doesn't really feel like Dragon Ball. And that's one of the problems I've personally had with uh, this Moro arc, is the fact there's not been enough comedy in it. Yeah. It just gets beyond Dragon Ball when there's no comedy. Sure, you can put a bit of brutality in there, and that's great, and I love a bit of brutality in it, but if you haven't got the, the comedy to balance it out, then it's a mess, and that's kind of what it feels like it's getting into at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, it's not staying true to the nature of Dragon Ball. I mean, has it really stayed true to the nature of Dragon Ball in all of Dragon Ball Super? Um, I think that's a lot of people's problem. Anyway... I'm going to finish off with this idea. It's a completely unrealistic idea. Well, actually, there's two ideas. <laughs> I want Dragon Ball and Shonen to become a bit more like DC and um, Marvel, where they start bringing different verses together for, like I said, a collaboration effort, like Infinite Crisis in, D in DC, the Avengers in Marvel. I think, you know, Shoeisha could really take advantage of that and make a hell of a lot of money. What what do you think about that? I wasn't listening. <laughs> Sorry, I was reading the comments. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well... Uh, what was it about DC Comics you so, wanted it to yeah, do? So, uh, yeah. What so, was the uh, gist of it? More of like a collaboration between, like, verses, like Shonen verses, maybe like Naruto and Dragon Ball and um, One Piece... Uh, you know, anything shonen and more, you know, kind of like the Avengers. Think the Avengers movie, not an, an actual Avengers movie, a film. But what if the manga guys got together and just created a collaboration story in a similar fashion to Crisis on Infinite Earths, Earths in DC? And I mean, there, there was there was one uh, done in a, a small anime uh, style for, uh, for a couple years back when it was... Um... 
they had like Goku and Luffy working together and stuff like that. And uh, it, yeah, I, I don't remember much of it. Um, I remember, I think it, I think the whole thing is if it still is, but it was on YouTube, uh, broken into different parts. But um, it's not I, d- I don't know. You've got too many different laws there. <laughs> what was that? It's not by Mastar Media, is it? <laughs> no, hopefully not. <laughs> no, I um. I, I don't really think that it would work. I, I think that uh, you've got too many different writing styles. Uh, too many independent creators think that their characters are stronger than other characters. Then you run into difficulty with, like, you know, who's going to take the L, who's going to do this, blah, 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 who's going to be the star of the show. And uh, I, I personally think it gets a little bit too messy. I mean, I, I'm in the minority. I don't really enjoy the Avengers movies. Um, I, I watched the first one when it came out, and I thought, oh, that was pretty good. Uh, I don't know how they're going to up, upstage it. And then I watched like the next one and I was like, yeah, you know, I, I get it now. <laughs> yeah. They're all, they're all superheroes. They, they don't really get along, but they work together and all this kind of stuff. Oh, they're getting, to, they're getting along now. I understand why other people like it. It just wasn't for me. Um, but then if you really want the crossover effect, I mean, look at how jump force turned out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I suppose but, um, <laughs> I can tell you all take the L. Vegeta. Vegeta, yeah. <laughs> Vegeta and Piccolo. Piccolo will take a bigger L than Vegeta. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's that's one way around that problem. <laughs> Just give Vegeta the L. <laughs> um, and one last, uh, one last completely unrealistic idea before I go is, well, is if, like, an animating studio, I don't know, Toei or somebody, well, it has to be Toei in Dragon Ball's case, I guess, makes a streaming service <laughs> and uh, remakes... <laughs> All of Dragon Ball Super, but uses Shintani's designs, etc. Um, his artistic style. You all know more about that than me. Get Nagamini to produce the whole damn thing and uh, bring Toyo, just stake to Toyo Taro's manga, but get more input from Toyo Taro and Toriyama if he's Dra- even, if he's even still Super alive. Kai. <laughs> um, yeah, Dragon Ball Super Kai. Um, and just put it on a streaming service. I'd buy it because I just buy everything Dragon Ball, but. Then they can like start from the Broly arc and do that weekly and do the full three hour script of the Broly movie that Toriyama initially had. And um, I don't know, move on to the Morrow arc. I think that's how they could make it, make it better, yeah. fix it. What, what, what's your, I know it's never going to happen, but what do you think of that? I actually do like the idea of that. And I mean, it's okay you're saying it probably will never happen, but I mean, it could. Okay. You never know. I mean, this is the future of things now. Streaming is the future. Yeah. Games are doing it. Other services are doing it. I mean, like, if Funimation are kind of the first step for that for us. I mean, we can see that it works for them. They they quite enjoy promoting their stre- streaming service on Funimation now. And then as far as things go, if Toei were to make their own network, I mean, I think they, they'd have a lot to put on there when you think about it. Um, yeah. Sure, most of their money really goes into One Piece and Dragon Ball, but to be honest, I think a lot of people would pay the subscription fees just to watch Dragon Ball and One Piece. Yeah. So, you know, and if they were to turn it into like a Shueisha sort of thing, then you could have My Hero on there as well. And, yeah. you know, th- th- there could be all sorts of things that they could do. And I, I think that would be really interesting to to see develop. But I think that it would probably end up having a lot more funding yeah. going into it. So I actually think that it would probably be a good idea. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, they haven't done it yet, to be honest. But at the same time, remake Super so it doesn't have all the uh, plot holes in it. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. Um, kind of got distracted by that. But yes, yeah. um, I personally would prefer that because then you can add filler where necessary. Yeah. You can go back and cover plot holes. It's not yeah. just it's not just about like not including them, but it's actually covering the ones that are already there. Yeah. And so, I mean, you can... The, the, trouble, the trouble is, obviously, Toro Taro was fixing a lot of plot holes throughout his manga as he's been doing it that's what all those bonus chapters are like you know when he uh, explains what age uh, the the pilaf gang is and why they're kids at the moment and stuff um and when they use the dragon balls and then he uses the stuff like you know where um uh, beerus flies back and tells goku by the way there are other universes and then flies off again yeah uh because that obviously wasn't <laughs> mentioned originally <laughs> yeah. and so uh yeah, there's all sorts of things like um, there's all sorts of things that they could do, and I think that covering the manga side of things just works because you can anticipate what's coming next, yeah. and then you can 
put the band-aid over previous errors and problems yeah. in the script and just kind of cross over it like a bridge. I mean, uh, yeah. and so it works. Yeah, it's a, it's a far more consistent. It's far more consistent uh, plot wise than the anime. I feel. I feel like the anime we're only getting tidbits of the information from Toyom and the, and the bullet points and just making it up as they go along. Whereas Toyo Toro's likely got a direct line to Toriyama. I mean, presumably so. I'm just <laughs> make, making that up, but I assume he has. Um, but yeah, so... I've read a different article before where Toriyama was mentioning that once every so often he gets invited over to Toriyama's house, but from the way he worded it made it sound like it does not happen very often. Yeah. But he does he is able to like send his uh, work to him, obviously, which he does uh, monthly. So there's at least a monthly contact with him, at least. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because he I, gets you know his his work gets overseen. I did read, yeah, I did read an interview concerning the future trunks arc as well. I mean, Toyo Taro pretty much, Toyo Taro and Toriyama are in the same interview, and they both pretty much say, yeah, we've gone over this thoroughly. So I mean, people like to blame Toyo Taro for it all, but Toriyama is overseeing it. I mean, like I think it's obvious that he's in the driving seat for the moral arc, but I'm sure Toriyama's still looking over it to some degree. Maybe a less of a degree now, but you know, it's it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see the next interview concerning Toyo Toro and Toriyama. We've not had an interview from him for ages. Um, yeah, yeah, no, it would be interesting. Yeah. I mean, like the the next time we'll probably hear from them in any capacity with any big news will probably be a, a jump fester. So in yeah. December, January kind of time, that's probably when the next time we'll hear anything. Yeah. Um, but it, I'm not getting my hopes up for any announcements though, because of course, like the last couple of years, we've been excited <laughs> for it, and all they've done is let us down. I feel in terms of is it they're deliberately for, doing it? In terms of announcements for like Dragon Ball, I feel like I'm in a Rocky movie where I'm just getting pummeled in the corner of the ring. <laughs> Just like absolutely <laughs> beat down. I'm just waiting for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When are we going to gonna get more Dragon Ball? Ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so I mean, that's all. I've got the idea for the next live stream um, between me and you and potentially a loser if he decides to turn up next time. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> will be to maybe go over potential Dragon Ball Super guidebooks and what they could entail because I think guidebooks would do a lot to fix Super's narrative as well. I think a lot of people underestimate how much the guidebooks filled in concerning Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z and the amount of plot holes that had, um, because it did have a lot. And sure. People don't, people don't yeah. seem to realise it. So I think, I don't know if we will get guidebooks for Super, but I think it would fix a lot of problems. I mean, we did just have a bit Well, if of a... not, I... If not, I still think we should make our own one like we talked about. <laughs> yeah. yeah, or make, yeah, make our own one. <laughs> uh, uh, fan-made Daisenshu. Yeah, I'll fan just make up some rules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what? I don't I don't like Piccolo. Let's just take him out of story. He doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's, from Series 7, Piccolo is actually a ghost the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> and if you notice it, that people don't really interact with him other than Gohan. This yeah, shows he's, that it's he's all a, in Gohan's head. It's <laughs> Gohan's imagination. <laughs> Um, it's the it's the trauma from his childhood being bullied and tortured by all these villains yeah. and like the lack of his father's presence and all this stuff and eventually it comes into fruition where he imagines up a green man to help him and like you know so much of this stuff all just happens in his head <laughs> yeah. um i'll just read the last few comments and then we'll definitely call it a day nathan gregan said we would get more heroes and this is two comments that could have done it when we were waiting for ten years for DB to come. I think I'm. I think he's made more tweets. And, I mean tweets, not tweets. Don't use Twitter. Twitter's a cesspit. Um, it, it's early, earlier. It says what they need to do is have all the Z Warriors have their own shows, and then they can bring them back together as the Z Warriors. Yeah. So yeah, that's an interesting idea. Yeah. Yeah, that is. There are Netflix series. <laughs> yeah, Netflix. Miss. Miss uh, Buff Kangaroo says DBS peel off revenge arc. Um, I love it. I love yeah. it. Golden peel off. Yeah. <laughs> Mystic RJ said get Jiren out of the show. <laughs> Retcon entire tournament power <laughs> arc. <laughs> I don't, I don't like, really I don't, think Jiren was that much of the problem. He, guess, didn't, he didn't say enough to yeah. be a problem. The thing is, I think Jiren served his purpose in the tournament of power, and that was to make Goku break his limits. I don't think he needed to be anything more than actually what he was. I think... It was just supposed to be this ideal of power that Goku had to overcome. Um, I get a lot of criticism 
oh, or I get told I hate Jiren a lot just because I think he's not the strongest. Um, but I actually like Jiren. Anyway, Demon Arc Realm says Titanium 666. Yeah, I agree with that. I think a Demon Arc Realm would be awesome. Um, Demon King Chatsu. Superman is coming to DBS as a villain. I mean, <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> the Hakaijin above all, geekdom. GB Vegito isn't stronger than Beerus. Uh, um, Vegito is at least a rival to Beerus, according to the Jump magazines. And Shin stated his final Kamehameha surpassed him. And I've been saying Vegito's as strong as Beerus for the longest time. And I was proven right. And all I'm going to say is I told you so. And but wasn't this the same magazine that said that Gogeta was the same strength as Vegito? <laughs> Yeah, but he probably is. I did a video on that just the other day. I know, but it completely retcons the whole... Well, it doesn't retcon, it completely uh, undoes the thing from the previous Dai's entries when they uh, gave the multipliers for Fusion. No, so, um, I the, mean, the, the like, multiplier from Fusion was from the super exciting guys, but all it really said was Goku times Vegeta. It was really vague, but okay, you go accept it for what Oh, it really? Is. But it also had another thing concerning Metaram Fusion. That said, the uh, two fuses are multiplied together. It just said it in a different way. And it used Goten in Trunks, right. for example. But I think... So it might have been translation sort of... Uh, I just don't think uh, not translation of... error, but translation sort of not being quite uh, quite yeah, direct I mean, enough yeah. to Kanji make a solidified statement. Yeah, Kanji doesn't really directly translate translate into English anyway, does it? And um, I think no, just no. a lot of people didn't know about the Metamoran fusion part, but Herms did cover it. Um, yeah, I did, he did put a tweet out on Twitter, and I did mention it in my video the other day. Um, but it absolutely, it absolutely can be the same. Um, there's no reason not to. The Elder Kai didn't actually say that Katara was stronger. He just said it didn't have the weakness of diffusing, <laughs> which was retconned. And now we know it does diffuse. Yeah, yeah. You, you've got to read this. Sorry, you've got to read this comment down here. The Hakaishin above all has actually done like a really good, a really good comment. Uh, I actually would quite like to see this get mentioned in the show at some point. Okay. It says, what if Bobbity and Bibbity were apprentices of Moro? They should create an arc about that. That's how they could make this arc so much deeper, though. Like, like I'm saying, if they add some yeah. context like this into the arc, it interweaves all the arcs, especially the Boo arc in this arc. It would interweave it, and it'd be much I don't, better for I it. don't want to uh, clap over the microphone, because it's going to make some annoying sound, but I'm clapping for you right now, Hakashi, <laughs> above all. That is a great yeah, comment. That is, like that is, that is wonderful. That is a good idea, and... Yeah, I mean, though Moro definitely didn't know what Boo was, but he did, I mean, maybe he doesn't need to know what Boo was to a trained uh, Bobbity and Bibbity. Uh, well, sure. I mean, like, theoretically, I mean, like, I can teach somebody how to catch a fish, but I can't tell them which fish they're going to catch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, it depends on timelines. I, I can't remember exactly what it is now. I know Moro was 10 million years ago. How long was Majin Boo and Bibbity? Can you, uh, can you remember how long ago it, that was supposedly in the well, it, de the it depends because it did get changed at one point. I mean, so apparently Bibbidi didn't create yeah. Marge according to yeah, he didn't create the, it. the newer law yeah, because Boo has existed since the eon of time or something like that. Some yeah. wording like that. yeah, um, but yeah, no, I, I, that's that's the, they're the kind of connections I do want to see, like orcs, certain plot elements of certain orcs bleeding into others. Um, it just brings Such it a together. simple throwaway line of dialogue could mean so much when you say, oh, Morrow taught them magic, yeah. you know? Morrow taught Bibbidi and Bobbidi. That, that would be amazing. Yeah. Just just like, you know, or they, they served under the same master or something yeah. like that. Yeah, exactly. And he got, like, maybe the reason he got put in galactic prison was because he was working with Bibbidi or something and they were doing, uh, like, illegal kinds of magic or something. Yeah. There are so many things that they could do with this. Yeah. Oh, wait, uh, I mean, actually, here, here's the connection in terms of timelines. Obviously, Bibbidi was around when Majin Buu actually absorbed the Grand Supreme Kai. And obviously, Moro had already fought against the Grand Supreme Kai before that. So it was definitely after um, Moro. But like, but like you said, what if they were all trained by the same person? And then there's an even bigger villain out there. And then it escalates because there's someone who has, like, unbelievable magic somewhere in the universe. Um like th this is a story waiting to be told if this is yes. not the way it goes i'm really going to be disappointed well done yeah. hakaishi yeah. above all yeah. like I, I love that comment that is, that is uh, he's, he's won this stream so far 
<laughs> Question scaling. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, wait. So to have this was supposed to be a forty-five minute stream. I'm pretty sure it's gone over, gone on over an hour. Usually, I've lost my voice. Yeah, at this point, But um, I, right. Last comment by S for E one K O U. More streamlined scaling would help. Also, better side stories for the non Goku Vegeta characters. They don't have to be God of Destruction level, but something for them to do for an adventure would be nice. Yeah, I agree. Some side stories and um, create some interesting villains that can have consequences that aren't necessarily superly overpowered. But um, then it goes back to... Yeah, the adventure, adventure over action in some cases. You yeah. just need to spread out the action a bit more. It's basically what we were saying earlier with the story. I mean, Morrowark has actually done an all right job of that. It's got everyone involved. Um, which Super hasn't always done. In fact, the first time everyone was involved in the Tournament of Power, but they kind of had to be. Um, and this Hulk even managed to get Yamcha involved. I mean, <laughs> flipping out. Um, but anyway, that's all for this stream. In the next stream, we'll likely cover something to do with guidebooks for Dragon Ball Super. But make sure you go to World King Kanji's page. I'll leave a link in the comment section and uh, subscribe to World King Kanji. I'm assuming you're going to be releasing some more content soon. I've also got my website as well, where I'm selling a load of Dragon Ball merch, yes. uh, including prints and key rings and stuff of that uh, ilk. Yes. So I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that, but it's uh, www.worldkingkanji.com. Easy enough to remember. I'll, I'll type <laughs> it in the uh, comments. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, World King Kanji designed my uh, avatar, the one that you can see now that's in the guise of like a Merge Zamasu like angel. And he also designed the one where he's got Broly standing, standing behind him. So make sure you visit his website. He's a great artist. It's definitely worth uh, seeing what you can get. Anyway, thanks guys. Thanks for joining me. Make sure you smash a like on the video and uh, make sure you subscribed if you haven't subscribed yet. Until next time, Ad Astra.